Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Well, howdy once again, Mike Kapler, my name, Joel Brzezinski, right over there across town here in the land of the Hawkeyes. Good to have you with us on our Growing in Grace podcast, our flagship place to locate all of these past podcasts over the last number of years, of which there are many. You can find that at growingingrace.org, growingingrace.org. Joel, last week I was walking around the track on a, a morning week, a weekend morning, and listening to our podcast, I think I was on Pandora at the time, just because it, I have easy access to that, and I was walking, so I just pulled it up on my phone and listened to the podcast while we were, just to refresh my memory on what we just posted, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. and, and was walking around the track uh, listening to that. So um, lots of ways you can find us. Yeah, Pandora. Uh, I use Google Podcasts. Um, I know people use Spotify all kinds of there, yeah, definitely Apple Apple Podcast, just basically any way that you can wa- listen to a podcast. I can say watch. Uh, people have requested that we do a video version of this. <laughs> so far, we haven't done that. I don't know if we ever will or not, but you can listen for sure. Uh, and like you say, the flagship spot, the place to go is GrowingInGrace.org. I know a lot of people don't do websites much anymore. My son was telling me about this because he's a music artist and he'll do. He, he was talking the other day about how, you know, it's all social media, it's all apps, it's all, you know, all this stuff, and hardly anybody visits websites anymore. But some people do. I know I do. And so you can go there, and if you just happen to forget where else you can listen to this, you can go to growingingrace.org, the website, and find the different ways that you can, can listen to us. So yeah, that's the, the a, video version for us. I mean, we did radio for a long time, and there, there's the old phrase: "You have a face for radio," and that's why we're doing <laughs> podcasts, so, audio only. And we do we do technically have a video version, but it's only it's an image that plays throughout the whole thing. <laughs> so on yes. YouTube, you can watch us on YouTube, but you're just going to be watching a a, a static image. <laughs> It's better that way. I, I mean, people better. need to realize we're, we're not in recording in the same location. We uh, It wouldn't matter whether we're a thousand miles away or five miles away, which is really what we are. But we're not usually in the same room together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, last week, we, we thought, <laughs> we thought we were done <laughs> with a particular topic, something we'd been talking about. It's interesting how... Uh, you know, we we had actually a you know, trick of the trade here, or I don't know, secret here, that sometimes we, well, actually, usually we record several episodes at a time, and so we had gotten some episodes recorded, and those are what you've listened to up to this point, and then we were sitting down to record again today, and some more thoughts about the subject came up, and so we thought, hey, let's just go for it. Let's just uh, spend one more week on this, and you know, just get some more thoughts out. Uh, From the beginning, we have said this whole topic of the law being abolished, the law being taken out of the way, the law not being a thing anymore. You know, it's it's a subject that not everybody agrees on. From the beginning, you know, we had some comments. What about this? What about that? And so hopefully over the course of the five weeks up to now, we've answered some of those questions. Again, a person may or may not agree with us and our and our purpose is never to make people agree with us you got to line up with everything that we say but we're just expressing our thoughts and uh, food for thought for you the listener and you can take it or leave it and it's fine with us you know we're not here to you know make sure that everybody is in line with us so uh, with that said cap a few more uh, thoughts to ra- <laughs> to maybe <laughs> wrap it up this week yeah, I mean, is the law abolished? And as Joel said, you can choose to agree or disagree on whether it is or not. We're not here to want to get into an argument about it. What we do on this podcast is we provide a perspective. It's what we've always done. The the way we see things based on what we've learned and what we know, uh, where we're at up until this time, you know, our our views 
when I say are, I mean everybody's views can can evolve, they can change, they can begin to see things more clearly as time goes on. We don't have a perfect understanding of the Bible or the gospel or God. Nobody does. So it's okay to sometimes see things from a different perspective. And even if you don't always agree with it fully at the time, uh, put it on the shelf and, and consider it later. Or maybe you're going to want to toss it completely. Well, that's that's up to you, right? So this thing about the, the law being abolished, I, I think, Joel, again, we, we know where the legalists are coming from. <laughs> When, mm -hmm. when they think that the law, or small portions of it, uh, need to be applied to our lives as believers in Christ. Uh, we know where they're coming from when they say that stuff, even though we believe they're, they're way off base, they're way off the mark. They're not even close to the target. Um, so when believers in Christ, who are uh, on the foundation of grace, are suggesting that the law is not abolished, and I asked this question probably several times in our series in recent weeks, is what in the world does that mean for us today if every single jot and every single tittle, everything, all of it, because it was all one package, the law wasn't broken up into different particles and parts and all of that, it's, it's one package, it's one law, it's not a bunch of different laws, it's all combined together, uh, something we've talked about a lot over the years here. So if every jot and tittle is not abolished, uh, that implies that uh, to some degree it's still in place to be used for something. What in the world is that? And I know where people want to go with this, and we'll get to it here in First Timothy, but here's the inconsistency with it, um, because we, we know there's in inconsistency and, and hypocrisy among the legalistic bunch when they try to take some things out of context that Jesus said about the law or other things that were assumed about the law, because they don't know really what the law says as a whole. They just pick and choose uh, what they think should be applied and, and it's ever-changing in, in their modern religious philosophy. Um, so with grace people who are in Christ and have an understanding that the law has come to an end, Christ became the end of the law to all who believe, uh, Jesus became the high priest after the law, the law was set aside. I'm, I'm using all these phrase, phraseologies that are uh, written by people in the New Testament, largely Paul and the writer of Hebrews. If, if we think that it's not abolished, what in the world are we trying to say? Because the law was never given to Gentiles to begin with. It was never a part of any Gentile uh, before the cross or after the cross. So this thing in Timothy where uh, Paul makes a statement, and you got to understand the context here, and, and I would argue that you should probably follow the context all the way to the end of the second letter to Timothy, but this is in the beginning of the, the first letter to Timothy where Paul said, some have strayed, they've desired to be teachers of the law. Okay. Joel. Teach, I, I know a lot of people think teachers of the law means that you are telling people to keep the law. Mm -hmm. But there are other types of teachers of the law. Right. <laughs> Those who think that they need to use it to bring people to Christ. We know the law is good if one uses it lawfully. The, verse 8, 1 Timothy 1. That's the one where people get tripped up on. Uh, I would make this argument, Joel, because I want to get you in here. Uh, I shouldn't say I, argument, but I want to make this point, um, and that is, if you're going to use the law to bring people to Christ, you're going to have to say that they failed at keeping uh, at least one commandment, or many commandments, out of that package. They failed. Therefore, you need Jesus. In other words, what's really being introduced here, after it's all said and done, maybe you do bring them to Christ, they suddenly have the mindset that I used to fail, now I need to keep this thing, at least portions of it. Again, nobody really knows in this day and age what the entire law said. So then they become legalistically minded. They don't need to go from doing uh, bad to doing good. They don't need to get saved because they did bad things. They were born in Adam, they were dead, and now they need life. That's why they need Jesus, and that's why we on this side of the cross in this new covenant do not need to be touting any jot or tittle, let alone all of it, to people who are looking for answers when it comes to salvation in Jesus. Right, and um, 
just while, while it's on my mind, you had brought up, I believe, in one of the podcasts up to this point about the uh, Philippian jailer. So just while that's on the tip of my brain, you know, what must I do to be saved? Well, was he told, well, you need to first acknowledge that you're a sinner. And, you know, he didn't, he wasn't led down the Romans road. I think that's the point you made. You know, he, he wasn't led through this, through this whole Have, have you thing. ever heard of the law? <laughs> right. Exactly. It's just said, believe in the Lord Jesus in you and your household will be saved. I mean, that's, that was the thing. And so that's the point. What salvation is about, what all this is about now is, is moving from death to life. And so in first Timothy, when Paul is saying, um, you know, some of these have strayed, some of these people have strayed, having turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law. There was a big thing in the early church, you know, at this point where there were people who were believers who believed that people had to keep the law. And, um, but this is, they were desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. And so I think that goes to your point about if we're saying that we need to use the law today to bring people to Christ, do you understand what you're saying? Do you understand that it's not just a small portion of the law? It's the whole 613 commandments. It's the law. And what exactly do you mean when you say that? And then he goes on to say, but we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for, and he he mentions a whole bunch of ungodly things, the law, that was what the law was made for indeed. We don't deny that. But as we see from the other epistles that Paul wrote, you know, the purpose of the law was indeed to stop mouths, to make people guilty, was the ministry of death and condemnation. But in Christ, it was fulfilled. And the message now is not turn from sin. See, as you said, legalists, of course, will, will go this way. You know, turn from your sin and believe the gospel. Um, it's all about turning from sin. It's all about you were once a sinner, and now you need to stop sinning and start doing good. But the actual message of the gospel is you once were dead. Now you need to believe and, and become alive in Christ. The law led to faith. It's not like you, you we need to point people to the law to show them their sin. It's that that's what the law actually did. The law actually made people guilty. The law actually was the ministry of death and condemnation. The law actually was the the strength of sin. And now it's led to this time of faith. And so the question is not, are you a sinner? But the question is, do you believe that Jesus is the Messiah? So for Gentiles, you know, you were talking about Gentiles. It's really interesting. There's absolutely no reason for us to use the law at all when it comes to Gentiles, because Gentiles never had anything. The message to Gentiles, Paul said this, was that you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, the Gentiles have been brought near by the blood of Christ. That's Ephesians 2. Now we've already, of course, been through Ephesians 2 in this in this series, but the message to Gentiles has nothing to do with the law. The message was, the message is, you once were far off, now in Christ you've been brought near. So do you believe, do you confess Jesus? Not do you confess your sins, but do you confess Jesus? And we went through that too. We went through First John 1, 9 and how that's not a message for believers. It's not a message for everyone who ever needs to come to know Jesus. They don't need to confess their sins. They need to confess Christ. You can go back and listen to the series to see what we uh, had to say about that. And then the message for Jews is not look at the law and see that you're a sinner. The message is now that the law has been fulfilled in Christ. Do you believe that Jesus is the Messiah or do you reject him as the Messiah? Do you believe in the blood of bulls and goats for your sins or do you believe in Jesus as the Messiah? That's really, that's, that's the thing. So kind of what we're saying here. And again, feel free to disagree. Who knows, someday in the future, I might disagree with this. I, this is where I'm at right now with all this stuff, having looked at all this stuff over the course of 20, 25 years. And that's just where we're at right now is what we're saying. It's, it's just so beautiful that we can have a nice conversation about this. And again, all grace people don't have to agree on everything. <laughs> <laughs> this is never going to happen, right? Um, and that's okay. Um, 
I mean, there's tons of mysteries out there that uh, we don't have all the answers to. But but with this, um, my you know, final thoughts on this for me, Joel, I guess is you know, sometimes we 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 read the Bible, we 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 pull out the letters, and and we we're reading along, and we always, I shouldn't say we always, but we often want to think that Paul is or or whoever is writing. Uh, whether it's the the gospels or or the the letters to the churches, we, sometimes even the Old Testament stuff and the Psalms and that, we always want to somehow pull that in as if we're going to apply it within our culture and everything that's going on here around us today. We think mm-hmm. he's talking to us. Um, he was talking to Timothy. So the law is good if one uses it lawfully or correctly. Um, now that would have been for Jewish people. If you're going to use it. Mm-hmm. In the way it should be used, it would be for Jewish people. But the Jewish people already knew they sinned because a big part of the law, a big part <laughs> of the law, was acknowledging their sin through sacrifices of blood, animals, all of that. And so that wasn't the issue. So if, if you were going to talk to a Jewish person back in their day and try to use the law the way that it would have been done consistently speaking, based on the things you mentioned, based on the things that Paul said throughout all of his other letters, isn't that you're a sinner and now you need Jesus. I might have said that in the past, but that's yeah, not the purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, the, the, To use the law in the way that Paul is referring to it here with Timothy would be to, to a Jewish person who knew the law, they knew what it said, uh, as opposed to some of these new teachers coming along who did not, and point out to them that they can't do it because right. that's what they were. They, they thought they were trying to do the law, and, and by giving it their best shot, they thought that this would lead to some type of righteousness. It wasn't going to. So the reason you would use the law back in their day to bring people to Christ is to show them, hey, this law thing, it's obsolete now. It's no longer in place. You can't do it, and that's why you need a Savior. Mm-hmm. And that's why it was made obsolete. Yes. So it isn't to try to show people, oh, you're a sinner, uh, you failed to keep a commandment or a whole bunch of them, every jot and every tittle, and then uh, now you, know, you, you should come to Jesus. And again, I, I think that reverses the psychology a little bit uh, in the mind of the of the hearer, whereas they get saved, and now it becomes a gospel of right doing instead of right being. And for you new listeners out there, based on some of our verbiage here in this program today, we just want to point out that sinning less is great. The less sin in your life, the better. I just want to make that point. But that's not the issue here when it comes to salvation and redemption. Right. Yep. Uh, you know, John 16, 9 said that, you know, the Holy Spirit would come. To, Jesus said the Holy Spirit would come when he leaves. The Holy Spirit would con- come to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And of sin because they do not believe in me. Not because they have not kept the law. Exactly. That that is a great point. We're in a different ministry here now. Yes. It's the spirit. It's not the letter in any way shape or form. Right. So, cuz that is a big question people ask. Well, how is the world going to be convicted of sin if the law isn't there? Well, Jesus right there said that the world will be conv- you know, the Holy Spirit will convict of sin because they do not believe in him. Like you said, it's it's totally different now. It's it's new. It's something new. There's a new ministry going on in the world today. It's the Ministry of Righteousness, and we're to point people, the Ministry of Reconciliation and the Ministry of Righteousness, we're, we're to point people to that, and the way to point people to that is to point them to Christ, and that takes care of everything, you know? So that's that's the beauty of the gospel, is that it, it, is, it is really, really simple. Uh, I know that I have complicated it myself over the years in different ways, and we just want to present it in the simplicity that it is it's you know death or life do you choose death or do you choose life do you choose yes. christ or not and that's the, that's it so i don't that, know that's, that's really the key there joel and, and again uh, looking for consistency in our message of grace the grace of the gospel when it comes to sharing this with the rest of the world and ourselves we can't say you're not under the law one minute and then start to say, well, you didn't keep the law, so right. you should come to Jesus. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a really good point. <laughs> That's true. So hopefully in this series, again, you know, I 
I always worry that we've belabored things, but I, I don't, you know, uh, b- because I have been known myself to go on and on and on about stuff. Uh, just ask my wife. And because <laughs> I'm not much of a talker, but then when I get to a subject that I like talking about, I can go on and on about it. Um, so hopefully this hasn't been too much for people and you're still with us. Thank you for still being with us, whether you agree with us or not. And again, food for thought. Hopefully uh, this has been some sort of an enjoyable uh, series for you. And we will move on to other things in the weeks to come right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace. Growing in Grace.